Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Dree. Hey, Dree, we got that favor. We got that favor. My goodness. Good morning. Man, got that favor. Hey, Des. Hey, Jess. Hey, Kaya. Hey, Thea. Good morning. Get that favor. Lord, I thank you for your favor. God, glory to God. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. How y'all doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Love God. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah. Y'all doing? I see y'all coming on in. Good morning. Hey, my love. How you doing? I can't believe you are either. I'm like, what? Big sis is on? <laughs> I can't believe you are either. I was like, the Lord must have did a thing. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Odell, just laying in Ben in Vegas in the Waldorf Astoria. <laughs> I had to say it like that. Hey, Odell, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, let's get started. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Lakeisha. This is your girl, LMJ, tuning in all the way from Little Rock, Arkansas. Welcome you this morning to the Daily Devotional. We are also YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and Instagram Live. And soon, coming real, real soon, we're going to be available on JoyNet Radio. So, do me a favor. Uh, first of all, I need you to go get that JoyNet Radio app. Because you will not be able to hear all the special calling in and all the other stuff that goes on if you're not on the app. Um, so make sure you get that JoyNet radio app. Get it downloaded and get ready. It'll be here before you know it. I'm so excited about what God is doing through coffee and conversations. And don't forget, we podcast. You can catch us later. For those of you that are not early morning people on anchor.fm backslash slash just being LMJ. Again, joynetradio.com, right? And anchor.fm. <laughs> Oh, anchor.fm backslash just being LMJ. So welcome to Coffee and Conversations. Now do me a favor for those of you that are with me live, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, please share the video. Put the video in someone else's hand. I promise you today is a word you don't want to miss. Now we're getting ready to pray. I told you God has been giving me strategies uh, for prayer in the morning and this morning we are going to pray i want to tell you something too that god 
was speaking to me before. He said, you need to remind them that healing occurs whether a word of knowledge comes forth or what. If you will tap into an anointing, if you will tap into the power of the Holy Ghost, if you will believe what the word said, healing, spirit, soul, and body can manifest in you. You just need to make sure that you are tapping into that. Hey, so make sure you are tapping into that and let the power of the Holy Ghost work in you. I promise it does it, even if it doesn't look like it's doing it. It is doing it. So let's get ready to pray. Um, God gave me some, pra some prayer strategies this morning and some of the prayer strategies he gave me. We're going to pray for our pastors ministers and those in leadership. We're going to do that. And we're going to pray for the faithfulness of members. Um, it, that, that just was on my heart this morning. We got to pay for, pray for our pastors and those in leadership. It's so important for us to pray for our pastors and those in leadership, allowing um, us to cover them properly. Um, being in ministry is not easy. Being a pastor is not easy. And for some reason, we members take our pastors for granted. Uh, we take our uh, leaders, those that are in ministry, those that are laboring in us for granted. And so this morning we're going to pray for our pastors and for leadership and for any of those relationships within the body to be restored. Even if you don't get or understand what your pastor is doing or what another pastor is doing, it is not for you to judge that situation. It is not for you to put your mouth on that person. It is not for you to speak on. It's not for you, not for you to question whether or not the Lord told you to do something, them to do something. It's for you to get into position and cover your person in prayer. Anybody who has told you that they just went into ministry willingly like they woke up one day and had a dream that this is what I want to be for the rest of my life probably weren't sure or didn't necessarily hear all of those of those that I'm just being honest that have really fully walked in ministry I'm talking about it was probably a fight to answer the call because it's such a sacrifice to pastor. Pastors have to be shepherds. They have to be sensitive to the people. They have to lead the people. They have to love on the people. They have to lead a congregation. They have to be whatever. And so if more of us got in position and interceded for our pastors, um, we would see the move of God. And even if a pastor is doing something they have absolutely no business or tied in and tapped into it's something they have absolutely no business doing, then it's not our position to talk about them as pastors. It's our position to get into position and pray for them, to get into position and to pray for them, to intercede for them. A lot of them are getting visions for the next year, working on their church budget, um, dealing with uh, leadership who doesn't support them. So we're getting ready to pray for our pastors and those in leadership. Um, you can add those in ministry. And I really feel in my spirit there is a healing anointing. Now, not feel, I know that there is a healing anointing already present on this devotional. And if you'll just tap in this morning, God will begin to do a work for you. So let's pray and let's join in covenant agreement, praying for our pastors everywhere. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the call and the commission on our lives to intercede and to pray in the gap. We thank you for coffee and conversations this morning. Holy Spirit, we just shake it out it's how you roll shit. Invite you in, invite you into this devotional, invite you into this moment, invite you into our homes, invite you into our lives. This morning we cover, pray, and plead the blood of Jesus over our, our personal pastors and over pastors everywhere, Lord God. We know, Father God, that the call on their life, the burden to carry the people, Father God, the commission to be the shepherd is not easy. So, Father God, we just ask for relief for those that are burdened, for those that are overwhelmed, for those that are consumed, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, that your, your ministering angels are just loving on them right now. Lord God, encourage them so that they do not give up. 
Encourage them so that they do not give up. We cast off the spirit of depression and despair and suicide and the resignation to quit off their life. And we speak life, abundant life over them, Lord God. Revitalize them, Lord. Renew them, Lord God. All that they've poured out all year, Lord God. Restore them, Lord God. Restore them, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for the pastors, Lord God. For those that you call to preach the gospel, Lord God. Those that you call to cover the people, Lord God. Give them their second wind this morning. Give them their second wind this morning, Lord God. We pray for their households and their marriages, Lord God. We pray for their marriages, that if their marriages are broken, that their marriages be restored this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that their helpers, that their help meets are in place, Lord God, Lord God. We cast off the spirit of division that's been trying to come against their household over their children. We thank you, Father God, for solid homes, Lord God, that they're able to minister in their household and to be received, Lord God, that they're able to be received in the places that you call them, the spheres of influence, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We cover them in the blood of Jesus, Lord God. Forgive us for anything that we've spoken against them, Lord God. We cancel the assignment of the enemy me off their life, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for restoring unto them, Lord God, everything that they poured out, their, everything their wives poured out, everything that their families poured out. Restore them, oh Lord. Multiply, increase them, Lord. Everything that they gave, every sacrifice that they made this year, Lord God, we cover them spirit, soul, and body in the blood of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord God. Now, Lord God, I thank you for the word of knowledge for kidneys, Lord God. We plead the blood of Jesus over all of those that need a touch and a healing in their kidneys, Lord God. We cancel the assignment of kidney disease off their life, Lord God, degenerative disorders, Lord God, things that are causing their kidneys not to function into full capacity of how they're supposed to function. We lose and lacerate the assignment of the en enemies uh, off their kidneys and we call forth and say kidneys you produce you produce you work you produce and you work according to the blood of Jesus Jesus was already bruised for our iniquities he was already chastised for our peace so we thank you father God and we cancel the assignment off the kidneys Lord God we thank you father God they are working fully functioning, every fiber, every tissue, and every cell in our kidneys are working and performing. The urine, the output, Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for whatever this shrinking disease, this disease that causes kidneys to shrink, to malfunction, and not produce. We thank you that miracle signs and wonders and kidneys are being healed and restored. Lord God, we even believe you for kidneys to grow back, Lord God. Function. We thank you for donors, Lord God. We thank you for intercepting the hand of the enemy and that the blood still works. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over this devotional. Mm. Lord God, that wasn't just back pain. That wasn't just back pain. That was an assignment on the kidneys. We thank you, Lord God, that kidneys are being restored and healed. Hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus, the word is working. We thank you that the word is working, that healing is manifesting and healing go forth. We thank you that the blood still works. Hmm. Releasing a fresh wind to fall on us, Lord God, today. We receive your fresh wind. We receive restoration to the body. For those that's been suffering with kidney, with poor urine output, we thank you, Father God, you are cleansing their kidneys right now. We thank you that healing is manifesting right now. Mm, right now, right now. We cancel the assignment of kidney disease. We thank you, Lord God, all the toxins are removed from their bodies. All the tumors are gone. Mm. And at the feet of Jesus, they are seated. Mm-hmm. 
and made whole. In Jesus' name, amen. My God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for those that needed healing in their kidneys, Father God, that they are being healed, that healing is manifesting. Miracle signs and wonders, Lord God. Miracle signs and wonders. You came, Father God, to set the captive free, and we thank you for divine manifestation manifestation of healing right now in the name of Jesus. If you know somebody around you connected to you that has been suffering from or kidneys, my mom, my, my, and that's what I keep hearing in my spirit. It's called chronic kidney failure. If you know anybody around you uh, uh, connected or dealing with chronic kidney failure, you call them. Or if you have the ability, you put your hands on their back. If you work in medicine, you touch and tap into everybody around around you that's been suffering from kidney disease or kidney function or chronic kidney failure and you believe God God said we would do greater he said for those that believe those that believe go on the mark and try me in this go on the mark go on the mark and try me in this he said for those that believe those that believe that they will be able to lay hands on the sick Cast out him. I, well, I believe. I'm a believer. I'm a believer of miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm a believe that God will give you just what you need. And some of y'all thought it was back pain, but it was actually your kidneys. Your kidneys were having poor functioning. So we just declare relief and release in your kidneys. Now go do the things in the soup, the natural, drinking plenty of water and doing We just believe right now that kidneys are being healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I love Jesus. I love when the Holy Spirit manifests. I love being able to see the work of our Father. The work of our Father. Not of Lakeisha. Don't look at Lakeisha. It's the work of our Father father in this in Jesus name amen well today I told you guys we were getting ready to go into Philippians um I would go into Philippians and we were getting ready to walk there's healing this healing gonna take place the healing can take place all during the devotional so just stay tapped in and believe um and today I titled today's message God doesn't leave you broken God does not leave you broken. And I need to share that with someone and for someone. Some of you have been feeling so incomplete in some areas in your life. And I shared with you yesterday um, the scripture uh, in 2 Corinthians 5 when we talked about awaiting the new body. And I said to some of you, the reason that you're not satisfied or have not been satisfied is because you haven't tapped into the fullness of who God has called you to be in kingdom. And see, kingdom is new. Kingdom is new language. Kingdom um, mentality has to be grasped spiritually and not physically or mentally because from the time that you were born, other things, other impurities, other things were filtered into you. I'm going to move my mic some for YouTube or you won't be able to see what I'm doing. For other things have been filtered into you. And so I'm, I just want to share this quick word with you this morning that God doesn't leave you broken. God doesn't leave you incomplete. I'll, I just just listen for a minute. I want you to conceive this. Just just listen. God doesn't leave you incomplete or you're going to miss what the Holy Spirit is saying to us this morning. Now, at the time that Paul is talking, at the time that Paul is talking, you need to know he's incarcerated. You need to know that Paul is in jail. You need to know that he is writing to the church of Philippi, that they are his partners, that they have been sending him, him money. Um, he is giving thanks to them. And all through this, he keeps talking about joy and rejoicing. And in my heart, in my head, I was like, how does a man rejoice? How does a man rejoice when he's actually living in pure hell? See, Paul must have knew something. <laughs> Paul must have knew something. See, Paul must have knew something that we forget. So here it is. He is rejoicing. He's writing. Um, from, Paul and Timothy are writing. They're in jail. They're writing to God's holy people. They're writing to Philippi. Philip, the, the, Philippi. They're writing to Christ Jesus. They're including the elders. They're including the dig And here these are, these two men from prison. These two men from prison. These two men from prison are writing a letter to encourage those that are free. <laughs> so writing a letter to encourage those that are free. So we're going to start at the, um, the 
I'm going to do to the second verse because I like to always back up so that you can see this. It says, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests known for all of you with joy, for you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ. Every time you partner, they were partnered with Paul in ministry. So I don't want y'all to take partnership lightly. Every time you partner with the ministry, every time you become a partner, you're partnering. So whatever credit they get, you get. That, that, and so Paul was like, whenever I pray, I make my request known for all of you with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I am certain. This is where we're going to pause today. And I've taught on this before, but the Lord pressed this in my spirit last night. He's, he, and and I, he was showing me some of them feel still incomplete. And I need to give you this this morning so that your joy will remain and you will understand that your completeness is coming. He said, and I'm certain that God who began the good work. God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. God who began the good work in you is going to finish. He's going to finish on the day. He's going to finish. It, you're not Here's the first thing to take pressure off yourself. You're not going to be fully complete until Christ Jesus returns. You're not, I told you, the longing and the desire that you're feeling, the little bit of incompleteness, I believe God leaves that in us so that we stay um, hungry and thirsty, hungry and thirsty for the things of the kingdom. So you're not going to be complete. You're not going to be satisfied by this world. You're not going to always be satisfied by everything around you. You're not going to be complete until Jesus returns. You're not going to be complete until Jesus returns. That's when you're going to feel complete. And so I want to show you something that God was showing me last night. I have created a circle. I've created a circle. And um, this is kind of what life looks like for us and we circle and I'm going to talk to you about coming full circle and what that means. And so this is kind of like, this is us. This is us spiritually. And usually what happens is once we are born, reminding ourselves and remembering, stay with me for a minute. Jeremiah one and five, he already formed us. He already knew us. He already knew what, how he was designing us. He already, mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. He already knew how he was creating us. Some of you are just waiting to come back full circle. And here is what I mean by full circle. See, a lot of times when we hear the term full circle, we think we're returning to the the position of where we were, but that's not what God meant by full circle. What God means by, by coming back full circle is that when he brings you back, my God, when he brings you back full circle, you're going to come back to the original state of what God intended you to be. When you were formed, your parents' opinions and the world and all of these other things taught you certain things and it kind of filtered in and made you toxic in some areas and it disconnected you from things of kingdom. And so you were not, you were not full circle. You were not, but God created us to be complete, to be whole, to be what, when he formed you, he already knew. And so this is what has happened to a lot of us. I'm just going to be honest. This is what has happened to a lot of us. We've missed We've missed that God is working and we think that God has left us incomplete because we can only see this side of the circle. We can only see one side. It's linear. The vision that we have, we only see one side of the circle. We don't see the fullness of the circle. We don't see the back side of the circle. We don't see where the, where God is working to make us complete. We only see one side of the circle. And when you're in a position that you only see part of the circle, you won't see that God is a finisher. And what God is saying is, ah, 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 no, I'm completing, I'm completing, I'm doing a work in you. I'm fashioning you out. I'm sitting you in the right places. I'm making the divine connections. I'm putting everything that I need to put into you so that you become full circle, so that you come back to the original state Come on now, Holy Ghost, of what and how I designed you to be. 
See, the enemy has tricked us to think that it's not working because we don't see, because we can't see the other side of the circle. The enemy will make you think that God is not working. But what God is, is he's on the other side of the circle, completing you, finishing you, depositing in you, causing divine alignments to come into place, positioning you for the next place, area, and where he's called you to be. God is a finisher. God is a completer. God is never going to leave you broken. He's not going to leave your circle incomplete. He's not going to leave you partially finished. It doesn't make sense. If he says in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I appointed you as a teacher. I appointed you as a doctor. He is not about to leave you in your current state. He's not a about to finish you right here. He's not about to let your finances end at this point. He is the finisher. He is the completer. God always finishes what he starts. God always finishes what he starts. God always finishes what he starts. There is no way there is no way God is going to give you a dream, give you a vision, give you a husband, give a child, and he not finish what he start. God is not fatalistic. God is not fatalistic. God is going to finish you. He is. So what you don't see is the other side of the circle. You just don't see the other side of the circle. You see the part in the position in which you're in. And because you can't see, because see, this is how you're seeing it. You're seeing it linear. You can't see the back side of the page. Other people can't see the other side. They only see what's in front of them. But what God is doing, he is finishing you, making you complete, and making you whole. He does the good work. He does the good work. He's doing it. He is not going to leave you in the current state that you're in. Numbers 23 and 19 said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken and he shall, has, shall he not make it good? God is going to make good on everything he told you. That's the word for you. God is going to make good on everything you took. You just got to let him complete the circle. You just got to let him finish you. You got to just ask for a God's eye view. You've been looking at this. See, we as men and women look at life from this point of view. We look at it from this point of view. We can only see what's in front of us. We can only see what's in front of us. And what God is just simply saying to you is, I promise you, I'm not going to let the circle be broken. I promise you, I'm going to restore your family. I promise you, I'm going to bring you. You can't tithe, be in faith, do alms, sow first fruits, do all the things, tithe your time, sow into your church, sow into the people around you, walk in love, walk out in the vision, and God not complete a greater work in you. God is going to bring it all full circle. He's going to bring you back to the original state of how he created you. He just got to process out all the toxins. He just got to get all the things out to you. He's polishing you up. He's a potter. You're the clay. You just got to be patient. You just got to be patient. And find your truth in the word. And that's what Paul, Paul said, I'm certain that God who began. And Paul is in prison talking to you. He said, God, I am certain the God who began the good work in you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus is concerned. God can't leave you broken. God can't leave you a hot mess. God has got to do absolutely everything he's supposed to do for you. He cannot leave you discouraged in drought. That is not who God is. If God gave a promise, if God said something, then he is going to complete everything that he promised and that he said to you. You just got to remember that even though you don't see him, God is on the back side of the circle. God is on the back side of the circle, completing you, finishing you, making you whole, polishing you, preparing you for your next season. Some of y'all a little bit older thought your season was about to end. Your season is not about to end. You're going to have a spirit of Caleb rise up in you. You're going to have a spirit of Caleb rise in you, a boldness to fight, to complete, to finish your good work, to create 
All of those things that God richly designed and deposited in you. So get steadfast in your faith. Go back to your dream. I'm giving you permission to dream today. Go back to your dreams. Go visit the vision. Go remember what God said. And remain, rem remembering God is bringing you back full circle. God is not going to leave you. He's not going to leave you broken. That don't make sense. He's not going to not fulfill the vision. He's not looking around to leave you sick, to leave you destitute, to leave you broke. That's the stuff that the enemy will tell you. He'll make you think that God isn't working on your behalf. See, here's the thing. When you're on this side of the circle, as God is chiseling and moving and working, God moves quietly. He, he moves quietly. God is moving quietly. He's fixing. He's mending your broken hearts. That's why he's been drawing you close to him. That's why he's been waking you up in the morning. That's why he's been trying to encourage you and get you focused in your word. It's because God is completing and bringing you absolutely full circle. He's bringing you full circle. He's working this all out. It's still going to happen. It's still going to happen for you. So don't abandon your dreams. Don't abandon your dreams. Don't forget your mission. Don't forget the promise he told you. If, if you're in a situation, I'm going to use our kids for an example. And you've been believing God for your child to return or something has gone on or they're addicted. And you know, you know what you know. You know what you know what you know. You know the Lord told you your child was going to be okay. Then you find every scripture on, on your child. You remind yourself your child is an inheritance of the Lord. And watch the Lord work this situation out. The reason, I'm a full believer of this, that we don't see some things manifest fasting is because we give up just right at the breaking point. We give up just right when God is about to do something. We lose sight. We lose faith. We get off course. We walk out. We, we reverse our words. We curse the situation. And God is simply saying, you know what? Nope. I'm trying to bring you full circle. I'm just chiseling you out, taking out the jump. He's the potter. We, we're the clay. He's working this out. I promise you, as God is a finisher and he will not leave you incomplete. He's going to bring you full circle back to the original state of what he created you to be. That dream, that vision. Some of y'all are like, man, it's too late for me to go to med school. It's not too late for you to go to med school. Take the extra classes. Believe God provision. Watch God do exactly what he needs to do for you. That thing about med school was a word of the Lord, for a word from the Lord for somebody. I don't know who that is, but you needed to hear that. God is bringing you full circle and going to do what he absolutely needs to do for you. Well, that's it. I think that's enough for you to chew on. I promise it is. It's enough. Stir up your gift. Ask the Holy Spirit to stir your gift up in you. You have gifts and talents in you. Ask him to stir up your gift in you. Lord, thank you. I'm willing. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Being chiseled out ain't always comfortable. Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm ready. I want you to fully develop me. I want you to do everything that you need to do in me. I want to walk in my destiny. I want to walk in my gifts. I want to walk in my talents. I want to be a finisher. So God, go ahead and finish this work in me so that I can be a benefit to the kingdom and for your glory alone. He's going to finish and complete the good work for you. Well, that's it for today. That's it for today. You chew on that today. You meditate on that scripture today. You ask God to show you how and what. Ask. Start talking to God. Just, Lord, stir up the gift. Start the gift in me. Show me the things that you call me to. Let me go back to the abandoned dreams. And if you're having a hard time thinking that you haven't heard from God, how you know the voice of God is by spending more time in your word. Remember, it's going to be pure. It's going to be lovely. It's going to be of good report. It's not going to be condemning. It's going to have a spirit of conviction. Just, I promise you, he'll bring it back full circle. Just ask him, stir up the gift, stir that stuff up in me, Lord, so that I can hear the fullness of who you call me to be. I don't want to leave this earth unfulfilled and incomplete. When I get to heaven, I want you to be able to say, hey, you did absolutely everything that you suppose, that I'm supposed to do. Well, I love y'all so much. Log on to the website, LakeishaMJohnson.com. Go subscribe to YouTube channel, Coffee and Conversations 
with Lakeisha. Um, you can do everything from our website. You can become a monthly partner, the daily devotionals. All of that is accessed on the website. Oh, guess what? We are bringing Pillow Talk to L.A. Pillow Talk will be in L.A. January the 25th. We're going to drop the link for that today. If you're in the California area, we're about 30 minutes outside of L.A. If you've never attended Pillow Talk and you want to attend Pillow Talk, Pillow Talk is going to L.A. January 25th. My ministry team and I are super, super excited about hosting Pillow Talk in L.A. So don't wait. Those tickets are going to sell out. And every time I say that, it happens. And people are like, wait a minute. I... These tickets are going to sell out fast. So those of you in the California area, make sure my girl Shonda Spinks Lackey is helping to host this event. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us this morning. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for their people and their dedication. Father God, stir up the gift in them today. Stir up the gift. Let them not be satisfied. Let them not be satisfied. Let them long for the greater purpose in you. Let them long for the greater reward. Let them may not be satisfied by the things of this world. Let them be satisfied only by you. Stir up the gift in them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, y'all know what I'm about to say. You got to do me a favor. Don't just hold on to your love. Don't be stingy with your love. Go and be love today. I'll see you guys back here at 5 a.m. in the morning. Love my God, stir up the gift, Lord God. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift, Lord God. I see you guys back here in the morning. Remember, we're in Philippians. Go ahead and start reading chapter two. See you back here in the morning at 5 a.m. Love, peace, and blessings.